Okay, we are on. So, all right, you guys, today, and I'm going to I'm gonna back up for the kids that are absent. So it is 5, is it 5, 8? Yeah, uh, 5, 8, 19. So our objective today really is finding trig ratios from the x, y plane. x, y plane is a fancy word for saying from a graph, okay? x, y plane is a, a graph, right? x, y axis, right? We have talked about how sine is opposite over adjacent. Cosine is, um, I, said, I said it wrong, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Cosecant is the opposite of sine, so it's hypotenuse over opposite. Secant is the opposite of cosine, so it's the hypotenuse over the adjacent. And cotangent is the opposite of tangent, so it's the adjacent over the opposite. But now let's stop doing that because we know that really, since we're on the graph, my opposite is really my y value, right? So my sine is really the y value of the coordinate over the r, okay? So again, let me draw a little mini picture here. And I'm on a graph, x, y, and if I have some particular angle, theta, that it could correspond to some x, y value from a graph, right? I've got an angle on a graph, and every point has got some value x, y, right? So instead of thinking about it in terms of triangles like opposite and adjacent, and hypotenuse, what we really want to do now is talk about it as the y value, an x value, and a radius. Yeah, Cole? Will the r value ever be something other than 1? Yes, and that's what I want to teach today. Uh, Great question. Really good question. Yeah, and it's not that hard because we're going to use Pythagorean's theorem to get it. That's it. Okay, so let's keep going with what Cole said. So then the cosine, which is going to be the adjacent over the, over the hypotenuse, is really the x over the radius. And the tangent, which is the opposite of adjacent, really is the y value over the x value. So the cosecant is the inverse of the sine. So instead of y over r, it's just the radius over the y value. And the secant, which is the inverse of cosine, which was my hypotenuse over my adjacent, is really now my r over x, my r value, my radius over my x. And cotangent, which is the opposite of tangent, is going to be the x value over the y value. Okay, great. Now, go ahead and write that down, and I'm real quickly going to throw the unit circle back up to the kids who missed it, okay? So, if you missed class and you're trying to catch up, we rebuilt the unit circle. And this time, we put all of the coordinates in, okay? We put the coordinates in from our special right triangles, okay? So, we built our special right triangles the day before, and our special right triangles. We did, and so we wound up with these coordinates, okay? So on a graph, this is 0.10, square root of 3 over 2, 1 half, square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2 at 45 degrees, at 60, 1 half square root of 3. The coordinate here is at 0, 1. So we put all of the coordinates from our graph on our unit circle, okay? So we got all of those, and if you're watching, you can pause this and add them in. Or come on in, and the circle's up on the wall, and you can just add them in, okay? So these are all the x, y values along the circle, okay? So what I showed was that technically, this circle, this circle, this big, big circle is really that big on a graph, right? It's really that big, but it can't fit that. So I got all the x, y values from my graph. And then we also put all the tangent values, which is the y over the x, the y over x, we put the tangent values all on the outside, okay? At 90 degrees, it's 1 over 0, it's undefined, okay? And at 270 degrees, it's y over 0, which is undefined, so it's undefined at 90 and 270, okay? Thumbs up, everybody. And again, if you missed the last couple of days, come on in, and I'll help you figure out what you missed, okay? Now, whisk this away. So, Cole, ask your question again. It was such a good question. Cole, ask your question but, again. Uh, it was a good question. Uh, is the R ever going to be something other than 1? Take a look at this example. So if I go all the way up to negative 3 and up to 1, I mean, three. think about this. If this value is 3, 
right? Then the radius has got to be bigger than 3, right? So here's what I do know. X, Y, right? Every point's got an X and Y value, okay? So here's what I know. I know that if I take a look at this starting thing, my X value is negative 3. My Y value is 1, but the R, I don't know. In fact, the R is not 1. Yeah. So the R is basically the hypotenuse? Yes. Yes, absolutely, 100%. The R is the hypotenuse. Well said. So if I take a look at this and make myself a little right triangle, right? See my little right triangle? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. I can get R, can't I, if I want R, which is right there, the radius. Let's go ahead and do this. So I can go... You know, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, right? I'm going to do the work on the outside because I'm going to need room for this. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is go through and do a squared plus b squared. Or better yet, better yet, here, it's really x squared plus y squared equals r squared. This is Pythagorean's theorem, but in terms of x, y, and r. Of course it is. I've got x squared. I've got y squared, and I've got r squared, right? Same thing. So it's really going to be negative 3 squared plus 1 squared equals r squared, because I need to find r. I don't know r. I need to find r, because like Cole said, what if r is not 1? We've got to find it. So I'm going to find it. Positive 9 plus 1 equals r squared. I get 10 equals r squared, right? Square root it, and r is always positive. It's a length. r is always positive because it's a length. Does that make sense? I know you can do the plus or minus, but r is always positive because it's a length. Okay, everybody got it? Okay, now let's do this. So in, I want to take up here, I want to take these six and rewrite these six with our values of x our values with y and our values with r. So it's really going to be pretty easy. So first of all, sine of theta, okay? And theta is right there. It's my angle. Is equal to the y value over the r, or 1 over the square root of 10. Now, I like this answer better, though. How about square root of 10 over 10? Isn't that a better answer? Right? Better answer, can't have a square at the bottom. Cosine of theta is the x value, which is negative 3, over the r value, which is square root of 10. Yeah, I like this answer better. Negative 3 square root of 10 over 10, right? I like that answer better, right? Tangent of theta is going to be my y value over my x value, or 1 over negative 3. I can handle that answer. That's fine with me, okay? My cosecant value, so my cosecant, I'll squeeze over here, cosecant of theta. Let's see, cosecant is supposed to be my x, sorry, my r over my x, right? Whoops, I got it wrong. Cosecant, r over y, and my r is square root of 10 or my y value which is 1 or just the square root of 10. My secant value okay, is my r over my x. My r is the square root of 10. My radius is the square root of 10 and my x value is negative 3. How am I doing? Okay. And finally my cotangent value according to up here cotangent has got to be my x over my y. My x is negative 3 and my y is 1. Okay? Pretty easy? Okay, so cosecant is the cosine of the secant, right? Right. Okay. So secant goes with cosine. And then, I know it's confusing because cosecant yeah. goes with sine. You'd think it'd be the other way around, but I didn't invent this stuff. I just teach this, okay? Now, what's a reference angle, okay? So the reference angle is the, write this down, the acute angle Um, let's see, the acute angle on the x-axis. I want to draw a couple of pictures for you because a lot of kids get really confused until I draw pictures, okay? All right. Let me draw a couple of pictures for you, okay? 
So you guys totally get it, okay? And the reason we do a reference angle is because technically everything's done for right triangles, okay? Okay, so reference angle has to do with right triangles. Because all of this, all of this stuff, all of this stuff, all of this stuff really comes back to that. I'll say it again, all of this stuff, all of this unit circle stuff, all of this, right? Remember how we found these? We made a right triangle, correct? All of these values come from a right triangle, okay? So check it out. Let me draw a picture, okay? Let me just draw a picture. Let me draw this angle here, okay? And I've got an angle here, and let's say this angle is 120 degrees, okay? Okay, I want you to look at this picture, okay? See this picture? 120 degrees. 120 degrees, this cannot be a right triangle, can it? It's not a right triangle, but it's reference triangles here. And they'll have all of the same values in trig because the lengths are the same, right? So my, re my reference angle is here, or 60 degrees. Okay, let me explain. I think reference angle is simple if you think I need a right triangle. I think a reference angle is very simple if you think to yourself, I need a right triangle. 120 degrees, that is that cannot be a right triangle. You guys agree? Mm -hmm. The way you get the right triangle is you make the right triangle over here, okay? The key about this though is that the x value is still gonna be the same. The y value is gonna be the same, right? And the radius is gonna be the same when you look at the reference angle versus to 120 degrees, okay? Okay, let me draw another, okay? So let me draw another one like this, okay? So if I drew this triangle here. Two hundred and ten degrees. See two hundred and ten degrees? There's no way that's a right triangle, because 180 degrees, right? Obviously. There's no way this is a hundred and this can't be a right triangle, because 180 degrees is a triangle, right? So two hundred and ten can't, but I can make a little triangle right here. There's my right triangle, right? So if I make my right triangle right in here, then my reference angle has to be that angle there, right? So like the 30 degrees. Yeah. See my angle, my reference angle like 30 degrees? Yep. If I make my triangle here 210 degrees, but it's 180 plus 30 more. That's my reference angle, 30. Okay? It is. The acute angle on the x-axis. That's the acute angle. Acute angle means less than 90, okay? And finally, let's do one last one so you really get the idea of what it is. Um, okay, let me go ahead and draw this one down here. Okay. Now, my angle is 300 degrees. Okay. There's my angle. 300 degrees, okay? Now, let me draw it incorrectly first so you get it, okay? okay totally. I'm going to draw it wrong. This is not, that is not my reference angle. It has to be with the x-axis. A lot of kids that is not my reference angle because it's got to be on the x-axis, okay? Cannot be that one. It's got to be that one. Does that, are you got it? Okay. It's really pretty simple, isn't it, reference angle? So if I draw this in, whoa, come back here. Here's my right triangle flush with the x-axis. There's my reference angle. Right there is my reference angle, 60 degrees. You see it? Yeah. Okay, and that's all I have. Let me go ahead and stop. Um, I do want.